update Danielle here with my best tips on choosing the right scroll saw blade. Everyone likes things black and white, but the truth of the matter is that though there are some common sense rules of picking scroll saw blades, it really comes down to a matter of preference. So if you were to ask 10 different scroll saw artists what their favorite blades are, you might get 10 different answers. So this video is here to give you a quick rundown of all the different types of blades to give you a general reference guide and hopefully give you the confidence to try for yourself and figure out what blades work best for you and the types of things that you're cutting. So let's start with types of blades. The first category that you'll notice is just pin versus pinless. This is just a matter of how your blade attaches to your saw. A pin blade will have small cross pins attached to both of the ends. Some older saws take pinned, some only take pinless, most take both. The problem with the pin blades though is that they're too large to fit through small pilot holes to make intricate cuts and they're just not as versatile. So for this reason, I really don't use pin blades. Next, we'll look at blade sizing. The universal sizing for scroll saw blades is zero through 12 with zero being the most thin and the smallest blades to 12 being the largest and thickest blades. Your thin blades are going to be for your thinner or your least dense woods. And your thicker blades are going to be for your larger woods or your more dense woods like hardwoods. I find it the easiest to think about it in terms of the smaller the number, the smaller the wood, and the bigger the number, the larger the wood, but a quarter inch of hardwood might be just the same as cutting a half inch of a softer wood, so density definitely plays a factor as well. Typically, the thinner the blade, the better it's going to be for intricate cuts and the less trace you're going to have. That means the less wood that it's going to take away from your project. But if your blade is too small, it's likely to break or to bevel. Down below in the description, I've attached a really good description guide from Pegas to help you get started. But I find that a number five is a really good medium point to start with. But if you're having to push your material through or you're finding that your blade is wanting to break or it's having trouble keeping up, then you'll definitely wanna size your blade up. And if you find that your blade is wanting to cut too fast, you're probably gonna wanna size down. A lot of blades also point out the TPI. This stands for teeth per inch. But I find that it's more helpful just to know the different types and names and to understand what those mean. And now you have what feels like a thousand types and it can feel really overwhelming. So let me help you narrow those down. First, you have the regular blades. And these have teeth evenly spaced all along the blade and all cutting in the same direction. This was kind of the original blade, but since then manufacturers have created a lot of different types that work better at cutting wood, so I actually never use them. But if you're starting out, these can be aggressive, they can leave a mess at the bottom of your piece and burn easily. So then we go to the skip tooth blades. And these are just like the regular blades, but instead of having one tooth right next to the next, they skip a tooth, leaving space in between to help clear the sawdust and to help the blade to cut faster. But less teeth can also make for a rougher cut surface than the regular tooth blades. Again, they have value, I just don't use them a lot personally. You also have the double skip blade, which is kind of a cross between the regular and the skip tooth. So it does offer the space for the sawdust, but it also leaves a little bit of a more smoother cut than the regular skip tooth blade. Also not bad, it's just still not something that I use every day. Then we have reverse tooth blades. Now these will follow the configurations of your skip tooth or even your regular blade, except that a couple of the bottom teeth will be pointed up so that it cuts away the splinters from the bottom of the piece. A regular reverse tooth blade might not clear the sawdust as fast, so it might burn out a little faster, but to me it's worth it. I always use a blade that has some reverse teeth because it makes finishing and sanding so much easier at the end of the day. There's also crown tooth blades, where the teeth have like a crown shape that kind of cut up and down, and this is supposed to give the cut a really smooth finish. From what I heard, they work fine, it's just a slower cut, and again, it's just not a blade that I actually really use. And then you have spiral blades. So spiral blades don't just cut up and down. The teeth actually kind of move around in a spiral, which means the blade can cut in any direction. Most of the time I hear from people that they hate this type of blade. I think it's kind of fun, but I only use them on special occasions. They come in handy if your piece is too big to actually spin around, you don't have the clearance for it. It's nice that you can move the piece back and forth and sideways. And the other time I use spiral blades is when I'm doing fret work. When I want to get into a really tiny place where it's hard to move a blade around, you can just kind of move in there back and forth. So they come in handy. They're just not great for everyday blades, especially if you're starting out, they can be pretty tricky. 
And finally, we have the modified geometry blades. These are actually a fairly new blade, but they're quickly becoming known as kind of the best out there on the market. They were engineered to kind of bring the best of all the worlds together. They have enough space to kind of clear the sawdust and prevent burning, but they also have the reverse teeth to cut the bottom splinters off and to give you a really smooth finish. Lately, I myself have moved to kind of using these exclusively just because I find that they work with all of my projects and I don't have to switch in and out a lot of blades. So I just keep all the sizes of modified geometry blades. Again, that's my personal preference, but of all the blades, I'm quickly finding that these are my favorite. But try some different types out and figure out what kind that you like. Keep a size guide on hand if it's helpful and just enjoy the process. And for some quick bonus tips when it comes to the blade, if you have a problem with your blade slipping, you may wanna start out by trying to remove the oil that it comes with from the factory. And an easy way to do that is just to take some sandpaper and to give it a light sanding before sticking it in. Also, make sure that the direction of your teeth are always pointed down. Even if you're using a reverse tooth blade and you have teeth pointed in both directions, you want the majority part to be pointed down on the top. And lastly, know when to replace your blade. Scrolling with the doll blade will cause you to lose accuracy and is much more likely to snap. You'll know that your blade is getting dull when you feel like you're having to push your piece harder in order to get it to cut or when you see a pile of dust forming thicker around the top. And if you're cutting thick hard wood, you're gonna need to replace your blades more often. They will burn out. I hope that was helpful for you guys. If you want a really good beginner project that you can do just starting out, you can check out my video right over here. Thanks for watching you guys and have fun scrolling.